Hi, I'm Caleb Morris. I'm the manager of the botany collections at the University of Kansas Natural History Museum, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about lichens. So what are lichens? Lichens are uh, fungi that feed themselves in the same way that plants do. Okay, so what are fungi? Now, fungi are things that we might think of as mushrooms growing in your lawn or out on the forest floor or even on a rotting log. And mushrooms that grow in that way are getting their nutrients by breaking down dead and decomposing plant matter and other debris in the soil and freeing up all those nutrients and building their bodies with them. And as a consequence, actually, they free up a lot of nutrients that are used by plants and animals. And so we all depend on mushrooms and other kinds of fungi. They're very important to us. But lichens are fungi that feed themselves in the same way that plants do. So how do plants feed themselves? Well, plants feed themselves by a process that we call photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is the process that plants use to take carbon dioxide, which is a gas in the air, and water, and in the presence of sunlight, they reconfigure those two molecules together to make carbohydrates, which is a fancy word for sugars. Plants use those carbohydrates to build their bodies, and we use those carbohydrates to build our bodies too, and also our houses and other stuff. So plants are very important to us. Also, as a, a byproduct of photosynthesis, plants produce oxygen, which is something we all need to breathe. So lichens are fungi that feed themselves in the same way that plants do by photosynthesis. So how does a fungus photosynthesize? Well, lichens do it through a symbiotic relationship with a tiny plant that we call an alga or algae. So if you open up a, a lichen body and look inside of it, you'll find a whole bunch of tiny little single-celled organisms that are, that are algae that are photosynthesizing. They're green like plants because they are tiny plants and they're photosynthesizing and they're making carbohydrates just like plants do. And some of those carbohydrates are shared with the fungus to make the lichen body and others are used to make other things like chemicals that the lichens produce. In exchange, the algae get a nice safe place to photosynthesize and probably some help taking up carbon dioxide and water and they also get a chance to occupy new places that algae don't occur very often, like the trunks of trees. This is a big pinnock branch that I had to cut down in my backyard the other day. You can see that it's absolutely covered in lichens. There are orange ones and yellow ones and little gray ones, and here's a big gray one. Lichens produce almost a thousand different kinds of chemicals that are unique in nature, made only by lichens. And probably most of these chemicals they make to protect themselves from the dangerous effects of sunlight. Just like you and I wear sunscreen when we go outside. Well, lichens need this too, for the same reason, and they make their own. Many of these special chemicals give them beautiful bright colors, oranges or yellows or grays, or even reds. Many people confuse lichens for mosses because they often grow together on the trunk of a tree or on a sandy patch of soil. But lichens are fungi that feed themselves like plants, and mosses are actually tiny plants. Here's a moss in my backyard, and you can see that even though it's tiny, it's leafy and green, just like you'd expect a plant to be. One way to tell them apart is by looking at them when they're dry. Both lichens and mosses can be pretty green when they're wet. But when they're dry, lichens are yellow or orange or gray or brown or some other color and mosses are always green. And here are a few other things you might not know about lichens. Well, there are about 20,000 different kinds of lichens in the world. In Kansas, we have about 600 different kinds of lichens. Lichens occur on every continent in the world, including Antarctica, where few other organisms can survive. In addition to living in the coldest and most inhospitable places in the world, some lichens live in the hottest and driest and most inhospitable places in the world, like the Atacama Desert. Lichens are often very particular about the surfaces they'll grow on. So some kinds of lichens will grow on tree trunks, and some kinds of lichens will grow on limestone, and some on sandstone. Other kinds of lichens will grow on soil, and some kinds will grow on wood, and a whole lot of lichens in the tropics grow on leaves. Lichens are ecologically important. Some kinds of lichens actually have the ability to grab nitrogen, another gas that's in the air, and fix it into the soil where it's accessible to plants, and plants really need nitrogen. Other kinds of lichens are habitat, the tardigrades and arthropods and other tiny animals. Some kinds of lichens are 
used preferentially as camouflage material. Peewees and hummingbirds in Kansas camouflage their nests with lichens. Some kinds of lichens are eaten by animals like snails or arthropods. There are a couple of monkeys that eat a lot of lichens. It's estimated that 90% of all the winter diet of caribou is made up of lichens. Some lichens that grow on rocks play an important role in breaking those rocks down and forming soil from them. It's estimated that lichens and mosses and all the other tiny photosynthetic organisms in the world that grow on the surfaces of trees and rocks may account for up to 10% of all the photosynthesis that occurs annually. And that means that those lichens and mosses are playing an important role in pulling carbon dioxide out of the air. And carbon dioxide, we know, is an important greenhouse gas. So lichens are doing their, their part to fight global warming. So I hope you've learned a little bit about lichens, and I sure hope you've taken a lichen to them. Now go out and find some.